Hello, everyone. Welcome to Morning Coffee. Thank you so much for tuning in. So this is going to be a general energy reading for Tuesday, September 17th, 2019. Uh, please take what resonates and leave what doesn't. Um, if you would like a look at your own personal situation, please go ahead and email me. All the information is in the description box below. But also keep in mind that, first of all, time is an illusion and energies are fluid. So... Um, just because this is dated for the 17th, it doesn't mean it has to resonate on the 17th. It can resonate whenever, whenever, you know, whenever you watch the reading and it resonates for you, that is the message for you at that time. Also, these readings are, what? Oh, <laughs> sorry, brain fart. They're not specific to anything, okay? So this is literally just a conversation your daily conversation with spirit, whatever spirit wants to speak with us about today. Yes? Alrighty. Um, so I do have some pre-shuffle energies here. And it took me a little bit to really get down to the bottom of what this was saying. Um, uh, what we have is we have the Queen of Pentacles. The Queen of Pentacles came out first. And it was the only card that came out, you know, for a, for a few moments, actually. And when the Queen of Pentacles came out the first time, um, I, there was the King of Swords with his back turned and the Seven of Swords on the other side of the deck. Um, and we were looking at the back of that individual. Uh, and with this Queen of Pentacles coming out here, facing us, it seemed it, it seemed like there was there was definitely some deception on behalf of a masculine energy. Um or I'm sorry, there was yeah, there was a deception. It, it seemed that there was some sort of deception that a masculine energy had uh put, put forth. Um and with with the King of Swords back, back turned, uh, it seemed like he was still trying to hide or still trying to get away with something, um, still not trying to face something. That was the vibe that I got. But I was like, okay, whatever. Um, I just kept pulling. I was like, all right, so then what is what does this Queen of Pentacles represent here? Um, and I'm already getting, I'm hearing it now, but it represents stoicism. It does represent uh, abundance, uh, the mother, unconditional love in a sense. And I was like, okay, that's that's all well and good. But what else? Let's get some clarity. And it took some time. But eventually, the Queen of Cups came out. So then, and, and the, if you see here, the Queen of Cups has her back turned. Um, and on the back of her throne here... There is a carving of a bird. It looks like a stork. It's not a stork. It's it's something else. I don't remember what it is in the book. They describe it. But basically, this bird that's carved on her, the back of her throne represents independence, okay? Um, and that's kind of the vibe that I was getting because I do feel like this is the same person, Queen of Pentacles, Queen of Cups. However, emotionally speaking, it does feel like this Queen of Pentacles um, has her back turned or is, um, is closed off emotionally, okay? Um, and overall energy, we do have the three of pentacles, yes, with the chariot. Again, the chariot is back, back is turned as well, all right? But this to me represents the direction that this individual is moving in here because, um, we do have movement because then finally the last card that came out is the three of wands, and to me, as a reader, the Three of Wands has become a card of being on your path, going in the right direction, um, following through with what you have agreed upon or with what you have chosen. Um, also, the Three of Wands can be an energy of waiting for your ships to come in, waiting for a return on an investment, um, having made a choice and, and you know, putting forth the effort to receive the payout from that choice. But right now, what this feels like here is being in alignment with your path, also getting in alignment with yourself, especially with this Three of Pentacles energy. So 
all ultimately I say all that to say that what this feels like here is this individual is very much focused on their own physical abundance, their own life, um, is focused on getting back to themselves, getting back to who they are, handling their emotions, which is most likely why this individual, if this is you or someone you're connected with, this individual is focused on handling handling their emotions, um, being emotionally independent. There may be a need or a desire to just be independent right now. That doesn't mean that you're not, you know, still willing to be there for people, but I feel like it's not going to be all that often <laughs> right now, okay? This feels like a timeout, but it feels like it's very much in alignment with your path. Okay, it feels like you are taking some time away to work on yourself, and that's exactly in alignment with where you need to be right now. Three of Wands. Okay. All right. Um, okay, let's, uh, let's move forward here. Now, the uh, I do want to say the King of Swords energy that was overall before, it does feel like um, that's what this Queen of Pentacles is dealing with or is healing from or is moving away from. Um, and it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be a, a certain masculine individual. It can just be... Um, overly analytical, overly critical, complete lack of emotion that has uh, harmed or or been a detriment to this queen energy. And this could be the balance in, in you. So you could be, this could be, um, you know, your masculine side has deceived or tried to get away with or slighted you or you know, it's something like that. Or your ego, your mind has really been running amok, and now you are working on bringing back, bringing that back into balance. Um, you know, not uh, not compensating, but for, but um, balancing the overemphasis on ego action or masculine energy. Um, getting back to the, your center, getting back into the core of who you are uh, is what I'm hearing. Um, balancing yourself out, uh, reconciling within. Even though, even though there is, um, even though there is action being taken and you're technically moving in a specific direction, it feels like this is very internal. Which, to be quite honest, would, um, uh, which is right in line with, with the energies that we're in right now, especially with this last full moon that we we just experienced last Friday, uh, Friday the thirteenth of September. Um, it's all been about. It's been completely about introspection. It's been completely about uh, handling your emotions. I mean, it was a very emotional full moon cycle, like. Many of us were just crying, crying, like on and off constantly. I know I have been. Um, so this is all just a matter of bringing yourself back into balance. Uh, for some of you, you're, you're re-identifying your goals. Your goals are re being realigned. And it's almost... <laughs> Spirit just showed me that King of Swords card again. Um, with his back turned, it's almost as if he's sulking now too. Remember the King of Cups came out, was it yesterday? And it looked like he was sulking or his, it felt like he was sulking or his back turned, was back, his back was turned. But, um, now that you are in this place of realigning yourself or coming back into your realignment, there are a lot of things that maybe your ego We'll call it your ego. Your ego may have been striving for, pushing you towards, nagging you about, that you're really starting to find that you are not in alignment with anymore. Like that doesn't even resonate with you anymore. It's not something that you want to pursue. It's not something that you want to be a part of any longer, something like that. And that King of Swords energy is kind of like, well, whatever. 
I'm not going to look then if that's what you're going to do. I'm gonna, you see that kind of energy. And really, that's just your, <laughs> that's just your ego uh, having a temper tantrum. It's really what that feels like. <laughs> okay. So let's move forward with the rest of the reading here. And let's see what we've got. All right, kids. Here we go. Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved for our Tuesday, September 17th, 2019. Please, what, what do you want to discuss with us today? Thank you so much, Spirit. We're gonna give this four shuffles today. Ooh, four. We don't normally get that number. One. For the collective. Two. A three. <laughs> And four, four, for the collective. Hold on guys, sorry. Okay, for the collective. Here we go, let's see what we've got. So sorry for the sniffles guys, I'm freaking allergies. My sinus, I like, I swear, channeling is such an, if it's such a, iffy business man either my nose starts itching or my sinuses act up it's like i can't i can't win <laughs> i'm totally kidding okay here we go for our tuesday september 17th this is a green day and yes i am wearing this green shirt um but as i was i've just been sitting in these energies and just trying to translate them and channel them and whatnot Green has been um, a very prominent color. Now, I don't, I don't know what card just fell out. My eyes are closed, but I'm going to keep going. So heart healing. Um, focus is on the heart chakra, okay? Getting back to, the, to, to what it is you truly desire. What is, what, is, what is your heart calling for rather than what your solar plexus or like your ego or your will is calling for? For the 17th, Tuesday, September 17th. What do we have here? Well, we have the Eight of Wands so far. Okay. All right. And it's the side of the card that has this, um, this lightning strike here. It's a lot of lightning. It's a lot of lightning. Oh, there's the Four of Cups again. And the Ten of Swords. Oh, ho, ho. Oh boy. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna stop there. Yeah, I'm gonna stop there. Overall energy, we have the tower. And the devil. It's almost as if this is like a mass exodus of sorts. <laughs> I might title this reading that. Because that's really kind of what this feels like. You were in the past, you were in this energy. Ten of Swords, Four of Cups. Um, and this Ten of Swords, it's so, I, I, I really, I really like the way this is depicted here. Um, okay, so this side of the card came out a few days ago. I wanna say it was last week, I don't remember. Um, I don't think it was yesterday. Anyway, 
Oh, didn't this come out? Is this came out on Friday during the full moon reading, I believe. We have this individual that's kind of looking back on this Ten of Swords energy, but what I find so poignant about this at this current moment in time is the fact that the sun is eclipsed in this card. And at this point, what this is looking like is, you know, the, that element of, okay, you're at the Ten of Swords, right? The worst is behind you, and yet you just can't get past this. You just can't get past looking at yourself, staring at yourself, like, like almost like an out-of-body experience, staring at yourself, laying down on the ground, pierced by all ten of those swords. It's like you're mesmerized by it. You can't stop looking at it. because of the disappointment, the regret. Now, this is the Four of Cups. This isn't officially the regret card. That's more of the Five of Cups, but I did just hear that. Regret. And yet, all of a sudden, lightning strikes, which, like completely clears everything, clears the air, and you can move forward. Lightning strikes, bringing this tower down or bringing, uh, breaking the mask off of the situation here. Kind of releasing you from the devil, from some sort of attachment. And this I mean, I keep seeing the lovers in this. You've got to be kidding me. I, I keep seeing the lovers in this. Now, this is very much, very similar to the lovers, okay? It's basically the exact opposite. Instead of an angel in between these two individuals, it's a devil. But that, to me, is speaking to attachment, codependency, some sort of karmic contract, even. <laughs> Feel, it just, this almost feels like a jailbreak. And I know we had, I believe we had a morning coffee that was titled that maybe like a month or so ago. Maybe more, I'm not sure. But Now the Eight of Wands can also talk about communication. There could be some sort of spark of inspiration that leads to a communication. There could be a situation in which someone wants to communicate. The other thing that I'm seeing in the in the tower here, remember we had the chariot in the um uh in the, the overall energy of the pre-shuffle? Well on this side of the tower we have the two sphinxes that were um drawing the chariot. It's like there is a complete change in direction. Mm. A complete change in direction. And the direction that you were moving in had to do with the devil somehow. Some, some sort of, uh, I'm hearing codependency, attachment, a feeling of obligation, feeling like you had to go in this direction. It's almost as if someone's like giving up the charade. Or maybe the message is it's time to give up the charade. Mm hmm. This feels like, to give you a specific, so let's give you specifics of kind of what I'm feeling here. This feels like, we'll say, because this is what it's, this is what I'm, I'm feeling, so I'm just going to say it this way. We'll use the twin flame situation as, um, as an example. We'll say the feminine here kept up kept up with we'll say the charade because of needing to have faith um 
wanting to trust oneself and like trust the intuitive guidance that they were getting about this individual and blah, 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 and whatnot, whatever. And then finally, one day, she or he wakes up to the fact that sitting here, staring at this, feeling the regret and the remorse and trying to stay in alignment with the situation is not going to get her any or him anywhere. There's that clarity. There's that understanding. Okay. And thus, you break free from the attachment, the codependency, the feelings of obligation, the karmic contract between the individuals and you break free of the mask or you break free of the, sh the charade, the facade. The mask comes off. The sphinxes are released from their duties of carrying you in this direction because you, you're coming to find that pursuing the situation in this way is hollow, is not getting you anywhere. Now, it doesn't have to be the twin flame situation, but I use that because that's kind of how it was how I was, how it was being translated or how I was translating it. Now it could be the twin flame situation for some of you. It really could, but it doesn't have to be that. It could be a pursuit of anything that was hollow or lacking in substance or meaning for you, but yet you were beating a dead horse about it. Does that make sense? Almost almost like the definition of insanity, but not really. What's the definition of insanity? It is doing something the same way over and over again, expecting a different result. Well, it's not quite like that. It's similar. It's not quite like that though. It's going after a situation consistently, approaching it from different angles, taking different you know, different, different approaches, trying different methods, blah, blah, blah. None of it was working. And for some of you, it felt like it was, the, the fact that none of it was working was just continuing to highlight the pain, the suffrage, the unrequited love, the missed opportunity, the boredom, the unhappiness, the dissatisfaction, whatever this is for you, okay? But, but you guys, regardless, regardless of what this is for you, this is a good thing because you're breaking free from this. It was something about the situation that I'm picking up on for whomever this is for. It's like it turned karmic. It may have, it may have started out really good, but then it quickly took a turn to a karmic situation. What does that mean though? I don't know. I don't know how to describe it other than that. Oh, well, okay. Something went wrong or something didn't go exactly as planned or somebody started acting really selfishly or something like that. And all of a sudden this karmic energy started to build in the situation. And now before you know it, it's not like you could even make a clean break from the situation. It's like now you have all this karmic energy that you have to purge first before you can even release yourself from it. You may be consciously aware of the fact that now of why this is happening and or why this has happened. So now you are breaking the chain or it's just happening naturally. Okay. very interesting it's just very interesting that this is coming through as the eight of wands now the eight of wands in my opinion is a minor arcana version of the chariot and we had the chariot in the beginning in the pre-shuffle we also have another depiction of the chariot because this are these these are the sphinxes and the actual chariot itself right there 
crashed and destroyed at the base of this tower. Maybe there was some sort of communication between the two of you that opened someone's eyes or between whomever. This could be, I don't know, this could be work. This really could be anything, but there may have been some sort of physical communication between people that has opened someone's eyes to the reality of the situation, the vapidness of the situation, the hollowness, the lack of substance. This also could be divine communication, telepathy, or messages from your spirit guides or something like that. Hmm. Okay. I, again, I want to reiterate. I use the twin flames situation as an example. It doesn't have to be about twin flames. That's kind of what I was feeling. Now, this also could be something that is a good thing. I mean, it does feel like it's a good thing. Ultimately, it feels like it's a good thing. Um, because you're breaking free from some sort of chains here. Some sort of conformity, some sort of karma, some sort of connection that you didn't want to be connected to any longer. Okay, let's move on to some clarity here. I'm going to use the Golden Universal Tarot today. I really want to clarify this Eight of Wands. Okay, one more shuffle here, and then we'll see. <sighs> Sorry guys, I'm getting distracted. I gotta <laughs> I gotta tune back in. Okay. So what's this eight of wands? Let's start here. What's this eight of wands spirit? The Empress. The Empress with the Seven of Pentacles. Wow. All right. Overall energy is the high priestess. Ooh wee. Okay, so yes. Um, all right, high priestess here. Uh, Empress seven of pentacles. So what this eight of no, so this was this definitely was for the most part. Um, th okay, well, for the most part, this was um, divine inspiration, communication from spirit some sort of insight from your higher self, from the universe or whatnot, whatever, that completely came in and cleared the air for you, completely cleared the space for you to finally realize that you actually can, absolutely can move forward on your own regardless of the circumstances, okay? Um, oh, now it also could be a communication from other, from another person, from, from like physical communication from someone that revealed some things to you that helped you see truly, helped you see clearer, okay? But I do feel like that for the most part, this was like divine inspiration, divine intervention maybe. But either way, it illuminated, number one, your abundance, okay? Your connection to abundance, your connection to the universe that says you don't have to stay anywhere that you really don't want to be. But it also helped you connect with your own inner divine feminine energy. All right. There's also with the seven of pentacles. It's like. It's almost like it feel this feels like a lesson learned. It's like a checkpoint. It's like. Whatever was revealed here helped you see. That you're harvesting something that you don't really want to be harvesting any longer. Like this crop is done. I don't I don't I don't want to I don't want to harvest this crop anymore. I want to create a new one. I want to plant new seeds. I want to reap something new. And not only am I capable of that, 
with the, with the Empress energy. But also, I have every right to. This Seven of Pentacles really does feel like a lesson learned here. And thus, which is influencing you to, like I said, plant a new crop, sow new seeds. That's beautiful. All right. Um, where do I want to go now? <laughs> I'm not really sure. Oracle guidance is what they're saying. Okay. Wow, this is going to be a little bit of a shorter reading, I guess. Um, all right. So, yeah, let's get some Oracle guidance. I'm going to go to the Lenormand deck, and I want to talk a little bit about this new harvest, this new whatever new it is that you're planting here, the seeds that you're sowing. Let's talk about this a little bit. Get you some advice. Maybe some things to look out for. One more shuffle here. Uh, something that I'm hearing that I want to say before I pull cards is you're in control of your own destiny. And you're coming into greater alignment with that and you're coming to a greater understanding of that. You don't have to create anything that you don't want to create. Your destiny is what you make of it. Your destiny is directly related to the actions that you take, to the steps that you take to the to, to the seeds that you sow there is no pre there really isn't much of a preordained destiny you come here um in this lifetime in this in this incarnation to experience certain things yes to 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 create but what it is ultimately that you create is directly related to that which you experience here and that which you We'll say shoot rockets of desires for, but this is hard to explain, but what I'm feeling is like you come here with a blueprint with like a plan, you know, but of course then we, we forget all of that. I feel like I'm rambling, but what I'm trying to say is someone here is realizing that their destiny is directly connected with what they choose to manifest. You're not bound by anything the devil the devil would want you to believe that so that it can keep control of you but you're not bound by anything other than what you give your power to and that i really do feel like that's what someone is realizing here okay so now in terms of this new manifestation and what is manifesting here for you in this new harvest, these new sow seeds you're sowing, whatnot, let's get some advice, clarity. Ooh, the bear. I don't, I'm not familiar with the meaning of that card. I'm going to look it up. Birds. Death. Okay. Let's see. Card number 15. Bear. I am power and strength, health and protection. Your finance is my field. Yes, your finance is my field. Your food is my concern. My bad side comes out when you see negative cards around. The polar bear is a fitting symbol of the indomitable dignity signified by this card, whether it be read as an authority figure, a protective mother, or purely as strength. The polar bear is the most powerful of all species. Furthermore, it's a color 
uh, its color is symbolic of the, of the pure spirit in, it embodies. The bear can relate to a person who is in a position of power in the business world. The bear can also be matriarchal. In China, the polar bear is known to represent Russia. <laughs> That's interesting. The bear may also be a symbol of officialdom and brute force. This card could be telling us to push something through sheer force. Um, <laughs> okay, so what I'm getting, and then we have, and then we have um, card number 12, which is the birds. But this, this card of the birds represents, can represent like gossip. You're going through a transition. You're going through a transformation, especially with the death card here and the overall or underneath the deck, okay? Um, and there may be a lot of people around you that are talking because you're changing your direction. You're, you're changing your alignment. You're going after something that you truly desire. You're coming back into the purity of yourself. You're coming back into you what it is you truly desire, instead of what others tell you you're supposed to desire, desire um, maybe what you have told or said or pursued in the past. And now people are all like, well, wait a second. What makes, why are you changing now? Like, like talking behind your back, gossip, blah, blah, blah. Did you hear what so-and-so is just doing now? Like, what, like, blah, like who does he, she think they are, blah, 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 whatnot, whatever. No, that's all this. That's all that, all that chatter. Okay, don't listen to them. Just keep going. Power through. You got the strength to do this. I wanna pull one more card here. Just one more please, Spirit. Oh, now we've got the next birds. Now we've got the other birds. The owls, though. And these represent wisdom. I'm getting silence from these owls, from these birds. Whereas these, these want to chatter. But these owls are staying silent. They know not to get involved. They know not to squawk back, not to clap back. That's very interesting. And then we have um, the anchor. Do not allow, do not allow these birds to pull you down. Anchor. The message here is to stay in your, stay in your high ground. Stay in your wise space because you run the risk of pulling yourself down with the lower vibrational energies of gossip, whatnot, whatever, that kind of thing. Don't give in to this energy. Okay? Because also, that's not going to help your new manifestation that you're working on. Whatever new that you want to, whatever new seeds you want to sow, do not let, allow low vibrational people or circumstances to sabotage your manifestations, your relationships, whatever, to pull you underwater. Before I go, because I want to close the reading with Oracle Guidance from the um, Crystal Mandala deck, but before I do that, I want to look at this, this anchor. With stability and security, I bring peace of mind. I push you to persevere and help you reach your goal. Watch out for negative cards. They might shackle and pull you down a hole. Hold on, give me a second here.
Okay. The anchor offers stability and security, being confident that your hard work will pay off in the long term. The anchor of the reverie is adorned with two fish symbolizing abundance and wealth in the Lenormand. This is a card of assurance. You are protected in times of need, but do not, do not allow this energy to pull you down. Stay, <coughs> excuse me, stay in your higher vibration. Stay in your wisdom. Stay in your knowledge. High Priestess. You learned a lot over this last whatever. I'm going to read this too. The Owl's card also indicates communication, but usually of less frivolous nature. Owls may be sharing their wisdom or urging you to listen to what your elders or learned friends may have to say. Owls may also be telling you to look for other important signs around you. Okay. I think you get the message now. <laughs> So let's close out the reading here. And I thought this was going to be a shorter reading, but obviously not. Okay, here we go. Ooh. Oracle guidance. Closing message here. Card number 32, Ascended Master Buddha and Peridot, Wild Compassion. Now, oh my goodness, you guys, look. I thought this was a green card. Look at this. It's green. <laughs> That's so cool. So, okay, before I read this, I want to tie a little bit, a, a little, some stuff together. First of all, three and two boil down to a five which is change. Excellent. Now, going back to my example of like the twin flame situation, what this feels like here, this doesn't feel like if this is a twin flame situation for you, this doesn't feel like you are completely rejecting your twin, whether it be the masculine or the feminine. What this feels like here is you getting back to your core having enough compassion for yourself in saying, okay, I'm not gonna beat a dead horse any longer. Ten of Swords. I'm not gonna beat the dead horse any longer. I am gonna do what's right for me. I'm gonna have compassion for myself and I'm going to start to manifest the things that I want in life, regardless of whether my twin is in my life or not. And that includes love, guys. That includes love and there is nothing wrong with that. And for the feminines out there, one of the largest, biggest messages that we had for the divine feminine individuals back when I started doing Twin Flame readings, which was like over a year ago, the biggest message was, do not put your life on hold for anyone, not your twin, not anyone else in, your, in life. And it kind of feels like now that's being taken to a whole new level. And this is not out of fear, anger, resentment, anxiety. This is literally coming from a place of detachment and realizing that you are abundant and you can have whatever you want. You can create whatever you want. And it's from this place of detachment that you're manifesting. This could mean that maybe the, maybe the twin or the individual or whatnot, whatever, comes back around at some point in life. Okay, if they do, great. If not, great. I mean, it doesn't matter.
instead of continuing to manifest some things that just are hollow, ending up ho being hollow for you, without meaning, and um, codependent even in nature, feeling obligated or like you have to do something instead of doing what it is you truly want, want no, you're not going to do that anymore. Why? Because now you're holding compassion for yourself as well. Okay, let's read this card. We bring you the blessing of wild compassion. What if a restriction now could prepare you to receive greater freedom in the not too distant future and to be able to be to be able to appreciate, enjoy and fully receive that freedom? What if growing pains now would strengthen you to be ready to receive a life changing opportunity heading your way? What if rest and time to just be at this moment would help you build up your reserves of vital energy for a time in the future when you will be asked to step up, perhaps to lead or use your energy in some way to support many? Wild compassion is at work in your life and you can trust that it knows what you need and when and will deliver it with unsurpassed grace. And that's so fitting because this really is a time right now of complete rest and like recharge. Absolutely. Okay. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it there. But there you have it, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope this was helpful for you. And I hope you have a great day. And I look forward to connecting with you again for our next cup of coffee tomorrow morning. Yeah? Take care. Mwah! Bye!